I'm Alex Jordan from LearnColorGrading and FilmSimplified.com and this is Shrimp also from LearnColorGrading and FilmSimplified.com. Please, please leave, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to get you some exposure, you know. Um, okay. Good. So, today I will be showing you a five-step system that will allow you to get smooth playback with Resolve, even on a low-end machine. To prove this system works, we're going to be using the worst case scenario. We will be using an old PC, like really old. So the footage we're going to be playing today is 4K footage, H.264, which is hard to play back on any system. Then we have the system. This is an old laptop I have. It has only a one gigabyte video card, which is extremely low powered by today's standard. This is a 2013 model. Now, why are we using a PC today? I just wanted to show you that you can get the same performance exactly from a PC. Why are we discussing the worst case scenario here? Because as a starting filmmaker, you might not have a lot of resources and you need to simply work with what you already have. So let's take a look at the problem. This is a 2013 model. And if you look at the footage we have, we have this file here. I'll just open the metadata window. And when I click on this file, you'll see its properties. This is a 4K file that is photo JPEG. So today we'll be trying to play this file and this file. Now the other file is also 4K, but it's H.264. So let's see how both files play. If I try to play the first file, I'll simply hit play. It will stutter a bit in the beginning, but then you'll get a smooth playback. Note that we're getting a smooth playback with the free version of Resolve on a 4K file on a 2013 laptop. So you can see that we're getting a smooth playback here. Then let's move to the other file. And because the other file is S264, it should not play as smooth. Actually, I'll try to play and notice that we're getting some trouble playing the file back. So now let's discuss the five simple steps that will allow us to play and edit these files smoothly. Let's start. Step one, simply go to settings, click on settings here and go to master settings. And if you scroll down, you have to optimize media and render cache settings. You need to change three settings here. First, the optimize media format. I'll open the drop down menu and select DNX HRSQ. Again, in render cache, I'll open the drop down and select the same exact setting again. So both will be DNX HRSQ. Note that if you're on a Mac, you will need to select ProRes 422LT. Then you have this setting here that says enable background caching after, and instead of five seconds, make it one second and hit save. Step two, go to playback and make sure the first option, which says use optimized media if available, is actually checked. Step three, in the same playback menu, simply go to render cache and change the render cache from none to user. Now these were the first three steps. The first three steps simply prepare the system to optimize your files. However, we did not yet optimize any files. All we did is to simply change the settings that when we tell Resolve to optimize a file, Resolve will be using the new settings we just changed. So far, nothing happened in terms of playback. Now we need to tell Resolve what files to optimize. So for example, let's come back to this file and try to play it. And again, it doesn't play as smooth. Now I'll right click on the file and there's an option here that says generate optimized media. I'll click it. And now Resolve is generating optimized media for this file. We might have to wait a bit for it to generate the correct file. I'll speed up the screen recording now and take a look at the end result. So now that we're done creating the optimized file, let's take a look at the playback now. I'll place the playhead here again and play and notice how smooth the playback is happening. We're getting exactly 30 frames per second and this is a 4K file and we're just playing it like it's nobody's business on a 2013 laptop with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Actually note how smooth the scrubbing happens. I can simply scrub to this point, to this point, and it's very fast. Actually, I can play the file at double speed and notice how smooth the playback is happening. So it's not always that you need the most powerful system in the world to work with uh, 4K footage. If you know what you're doing, you can always get smooth playback even on lower end systems or slightly older systems. That is until you start adding color effects. 
That's where step five comes in. Step five is important because no matter how powerful your system is, you might have the most powerful computer in the world. At one point, you can add enough color effects and windows that your playback will become slow. So let's simulate this. I'll go to the color tab and we'll do some extreme color changes. Okay, so let's just make this this color. Let's add a new node. I'll go to color nodes, add a serial node, and in the serial node that add a window, you know, just trying to push the system to its limit. I'll again go to color nodes, add an outside node and change the colors here even more. And once we go back to the edit tab and we try to play, I'll place the play head here and play. Notice that we're not getting smooth playback anymore. If you don't have smooth playback at this point, all you need to do is to right click on the file and select render cache color output. I'll click it. And now we don't have a render bar. All what we have now is this red line on top of the file that is being overtaken by a blue line. So once the blue line is done, so the whole bar just became blue, we will go back into having smooth playback no matter how many effects and windows and no matter how, uh, you know, you pushed the color grade, you'll still get a smooth playback no matter what happens. So now once we're done, I'll place the playhead back here again and play and notice the smooth playback. Uh, and can even scrub very easily through the footage. Notice how beautiful scrubs and I'll just keep on playing. Now there's something very important to mention here. Faster computers are great. We all love faster computers because all uh, editing environments, whether Resolve, Premiere, uh, Final Cut, the better your computer is, the more powerful it is, you'll get a smoother playback. That's a given. But the point here that if you don't have access to a very fast computer, no problem you can still work with Resolve smoothly by waiting a bit for Resolve to generate optimized media. And sometimes this might take a while, but at the end, you can use a system as old as this to work with 4K footage, which is unbelievable. So let's take a look at the specs of the system I just used. This is, uh, you know, what was available in 2013. It has an i7-3520M processor. You can look it up it's a 2.9 gigahertz processor. Now I upgraded the RAM once I bought this. Um, it had originally four gigs of RAM and I added extra eight. Uh, I think it cost me like around $100 at the time. And for the uh, graphics card, I can simply click on system information here. And this one has the GeForce GT640 MLE, which is again, uh, a one gig card that is considered very old at this point, but it's what was available at the time. If you like this, please share it with other filmmakers, you know, to make their lives easier when they're editing on their systems. And please visit us at filmsimplified.com and learn color grading, where you can sign up to our free courses. Uh, we have a dedicated course that teaches you everything about Resolve from start to finish, you know, just, um, a crash course. The crash course is divided into multiple sections where you have a section only for uh, editing, a section only for fusion, a section for color grading, a section also for uh, audio and export. So um, it's an overall view at Resolve. So please visit us at learncolorgrading and filmsimplified.com. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com.